So let's talk about converting from prefix notation to infix notation. So we're going to learn how to do this in Python. So first, let's just walk through an example, and then we'll go through the algorithm that we're going to use for this. So just a quick recap, prefix to infix is basically, we have these two different notations. So generally, you're going to see infix notation whenever you're doing practically anything with math expressions. But prefix notation is just another way to represent that infix notation by just rearranging some of the operators and some of the operands. So let's say, for example, I have the infix notation a plus b times c minus d. Well, in prefix, this is going to turn into a times, and then we have plus a b minus c d. So how exactly did this work? So we just found that we were multiplying two expressions right here. So that's why this multiplication symbol came here. And then in the first expression, we were adding two things. So that came first here. And the two things that we were adding were just normal operands, just a and b. So those came after. So we had a right here and b right here. And then once we finished that, we also had these subtractions. So we had a subtraction symbol here, and we were subtracting C and D. So C came here and D came here. So that sort of explains the order of that notation. Now we're going to look at converting backwards. So we want to get from this yellow expression right here to this white expression right here. And we're going to see how we can do that with Python as well. So let's just clear this canvas. And let's just bring this to the side here. Now, how do I convert this back to infix? So there are a few steps that we're going to do. So we're going to start off by just declaring a set of our operators just so then we can keep track of what are operators and what are not operators. So we'll keep that set somewhere as a variable. And then we're going to have an expression that we're given as our input. And then for this, we're going to need a stack. So a stack is going to be the backbones of this algorithm. It's going to keep track of our operands and any sub expressions so that when we reach any operators, we can combine different sub expressions or operands themselves. So the steps we're going to use are, we're going to loop from right to left. So we're going to go in this direction. So loop right to left in expression. And for each iteration, we're going to get whatever symbol we have. And if that symbol is an operand, so if symbol is an operand, if it's an operand, we're just going to add it to the stack. So we'll have a stack that we create as a variable initially, and we'll just say add symbol to stack. And so the stack is just going to hold any operands and sub expressions as we said before. Now, otherwise, if our symbol is not an operand, then that means the symbol is going to be an operator. So that's else, and that's going to be the case that the symbol is an operator. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to get our two most recent items from our stack, so the topmost items. So get two topmost items in stack. So in stack, we'll just remove those from the stack. And then we're going to create a sub expression that combines those two top items along with our operand. We're going to say create string. And then the template's going to look something like sub expression one or operand one, and then our operator, and then our second sub expression that we popped from the stack. So sub two, and that'll be our string. And we're going to add this string back to the stack. So add resulting string. to the stack. And so we're going to keep doing this and we'll be going backwards, of course. And by the time we get to the end of our string, by the time we're done iterating, we're going to end up with 
a stack that has a single element and that single element is going to be our entire expression that is now an infix. And keep in mind here, we want to probably include some parentheses in our infix notation. So here as well, we'll just put a parentheses and parentheses in our string. And that's all that we have to do here. So let's try this out on this particular example right here. So we'll start with the last character and that last character is going to be a D. And so according to our algorithm, it's not an operator, it's an operand. So we're going to add it to our stack. So let's just keep track of our stack here. So our stack currently looks like this. But now that we add a D to it, it's going to have a D right here. So here what we did was add to stack. Now the next character is going to be C. So with C, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add to stack. So we'll extend our stack a little bit and we'll add C right here. Now the next symbol we're going to see is a minus sign. Now this minus sign is an operator. So because it's an operator, we're going to get the two topmost items from stack and create the string that's going to be a sub expression using those two operands and our operator. And we're going to add the resulting string back to stack. So here we'll just say create new sub expression and I'll just abbreviate that. And so here what we're doing is we're saying that we remove C and D. And so they're out of here now. And we create a new string. And this is going to have a parentheses. And we're going to have C and our operator. So our operator was a minus sign. So C minus, and then we're going to move the D back. And then we can close this off with a closing parentheses, and then this will be the end of our string, and we'll put this back into our stack. So we'll just extend this a little bit, move this right here, and place this up here. And let's just shift the stack over a little bit just to make some space. Now the next character we're going to add is a B. So right here, we can say B, and here we're just again going to add to the stack. So add to stack. And so we can just extend our stack a little bit. And we should have a B here. So now we currently have two elements. We have the sub expression containing C minus D, and we have B. And now after that, our next character is an A. So we're going to, again, add it to the stack. So add to stack. So we'll extend this once again. And I'm just going to move this down here. And so now we have an A. Now the next character is going to be a plus sign. So here, once again, we have to create a new sub expression. So we'll just copy this over here. So we create that new sub expression. So we take A and B out of the stack. So let's remove those two. So we take A and we take B. And let's also borrow some quotation marks for our string. So we have these two and we don't need this anymore. So we have A and B and we are adding them. So we can say plus, and then we also need those two parentheses that we add. And this resulting string is going to be put back into our stack. So we'll just adjust this a little bit and let's add this back to our stack. So now our stack currently contains two items. We have C minus D and we have A plus B. And now the final character that we see in the string is going to be a times. So we say times. So this is an operand. So we're going to create a new sub expression. So we'll just move this down here. And so what we do here is we're going to take the topmost elements in our stack. So that's going to be a plus b and c minus d. And we attach them together along with the new operator. And the operator is going to be the times symbol. And then we can close this off with closing quotation marks. We don't need these anymore. And we can add this back to our stack. So I'll just move this down here and I'll move this here. So we end up with a stack that contains the single element and this single element is an infix notation. So we can pop this item from the stack and so we remove it and that's the final value that we're going to return. And so it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and implement this in Python now. 
So before we start, we just need to import one thing, and that's going to be the deck from the collections module. And we're going to use that to emulate a stack. So we'll say from collections import deck. Now our main function is going to be called prefix to infix. So def prefix to infix. And we'll have some expression as our input. Now let's create our set of operators. So we'll say operators is equal to a set containing a caret, a multiplication sign, a division sign, a percent sign. So this is just modulo in the event that the user has modulo. And then we have plus and minus. So these are the six operators that we can use. And this first one's just exponentiation. Now, for the purposes of this program, we're going to assume that the user is going to space separate their characters. So we're going to say expression is equal to expression dot split at spaces. Now, if your particular expression isn't space separated, you can either make it space separated or you can, of course, modify this algorithm so that it doesn't do the split here. It'll work either way. And now the final thing we can do is create our stack. So we'll say stack is equal to deck. And that's all. And now we can iterate from right to left. So we'll say for i in range length of expression minus one, negative one, negative one. That'll help us go backwards. And we'll just get that particular symbol. So symbol is equal to expression at index i. And so the next thing is we're going to check if our symbol is an operator or if it's not. So if symbol in operators, and let's just pass on this for now because the other part is easier. So otherwise, that means it's an operand. So we'll just say stack dot append symbol. And that one's pretty straightforward. All right, so now that we've done this, let's go back to line 11. We'll just remove this. And now according to the algorithm that we wrote out, we wanna get the two topmost items in our stack. We just wanna pop them out and we want to combine them into a string along with the symbol for the operator that we're using. So we'll say sub expression is equal to, we'll use an F string here. And so we're gonna start with an opening parentheses and we'll just put our three templates here. So template, 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 and then we'll just close it off with a closing parentheses. Now our middle item is going to be the symbol and that's the operator. And then our two items on the left and right are going to be what we get when we pop from the stack. So stack.pop and stack.pop. And that's pretty much it. So we can just add this back to the stack, stack.append sub expression. And then after this, after the loop is done, we should only have one item remaining in our stack. And that will be the new infix notation. So return stack.pop. All right, so let's go ahead and test this code. So let's say my prefix notation is what we had before when we were writing this out. So prefix is equal to times plus a, b, minus c, d. And so my infix notation is going to be prefix to infix, given that I have a prefix as my parameter. And then let's just print this out to see what we get. So print infix. And if we're right, we should get in parentheses a plus b, and then times in parentheses c minus d. So let's run this, and we get a plus b times c minus d. And so that was pretty straightforward. And we can even modify our prefix expression so that we have uh, multiple numbers. So let's say the C wasn't a C, but instead it was like 124. And so we run this again. And this is actually an instance where having a space separated prefix notation helps because once we split our expression, we're isolating each symbol. And this symbol itself is going to be one symbol. It's not going to be three. So we can run this and we should get instead of C, we have 124. And so it still works fine. So that's it for this video. And I hope this was helpful.